Hello and welcome to The Woman Show. I'm Lenina Rasool. It is Mother's Day and we have an exciting show planned where we will be speaking about mothering, motherhood, some of the unique challenges that women face as mothers and also celebrating mothers for the wonderful job that we all do in raising our children. Now after the break we're going to be speaking to Julie Mentored from Embrace a Movement for Mothers, an organization that is connecting mothers around South Africa, that's providing support and also doing advocacy around the challenges that mothers face. But before that, we're going to have a look at a short video by Embrace about what they do, about the type of support they provide and how they are connecting mothers to each other. Let's have a look. supporters believe we are diverse but united by our common experiences of motherhood every mother can gain from and contribute to the movement every mother is the expert on her child every mother is worthy of care and support we listen first and then speak we encourage and support rather than judge and criticize how we do things is as important as what we do our voices and stories are powerful what divides us needs to be diminished. Friendship and community are critical for our mental health and well-being. We acknowledge and value the role of culture and beliefs in the way they shape our motherhood journey. There are many good practices of motherhood, but no single way to mother our children. We have the right to celebrate our children and to honor our role as mothers of the next generation.
That was a short video by Embrace, a movement for mothers. We are going to take a short break, but we'll be back with more after this. With the My DSTV app, you can securely and conveniently pay your DSTV account from wherever you are. Simply tap on view slash pay. Confirm the payment method you prefer. Then follow the few easy steps. And that's it. All done in a few minutes. So say goodbye to queues, phone calls or missing out on your favorite shows. It's your account on your terms with the My DSTV app. Download it today. Welcome back. You're still watching The Woman Show and it is Mother's Day. I am so excited to have a great organization that works with mothers on the show today. We are speaking to Julie Mentor from Embrace, a movement for mothers. Julie, welcome and thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, Linda. Happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, thank you and to you, Julie. And I think to all of thank the you. mothers out there who are watching, Julie, Embrace is running a very exciting campaign this year for Mother's Day, but I wanted to start off with just some context around Embrace, what you guys do, this movement for mothers, what is it all about? Sure, so Embrace is a social movement for motherhood, um, specifically supporting early motherhood because that transition into motherhood is a wild ride for anyone, no matter when you start, if you're very young when you become a mum or older, whether it's your first child or your fifth child, every journey into motherhood um, presents unique uh, challenges and unique opportunities that need to be supported. And we want to create a South Africa where every mother is able to thrive in the motherhood journey and where they are valued and respected for the role that they play in society. Um, and so we do that in two ways. We have a um, sort of strong advocacy platform where we advocate for the needs of early motherhood. Um, we look at very specific focus areas and we're petitioning for South Africa to, to really to, to make the motherhood experience a, um, a better one for every mother. Um, and then we also work to create environments where mothers can connect with each other and build that community of motherhood that every mother needs, every mother deserves to be a part of. And that's where the social movement sort of component is and that we are both a movement for change, but we are a social movement. We do it in community of mothers. Um, and so, yeah, that's us in, in, in a nutshell. I love that. I mean, thank you, Julie, for the introduction. And you mentioned uh, a few things that I just want to draw out. You mentioned advocacy for motherhood, which is mm -hmm. great, and also a social movement. And what those things uh, speak to is that they are challenges to motherhood. And so when you say creating a community for motherhood and the advocacy, it's to tackle some of those challenges. And I know that Embrace has had also a series of dialogues where mothers came on and really spoke candidly about some of the challenges that we, that we experience, but that often has been just too taboo to speak about. I mean, mothers are supposed to be, you know, perfect, nurturing, sort of, you know, uh, not have any problems with raising kids at all. But I want to ask you, so from a, I think from an advocacy perspective, but also just generally, what are some of the issues that came up during these dialogues or some of the things that mothers have said that they are grappling with? Mm. So, yeah, you made a really good point, Lenina. It's, I think there is a taboo around, you know, what mothers are. Mothers are seen as a rot of society, right? And I think, I think that's a unfortunate um, position that we put mothers in because, yes, mothers are strong and we are resilient, but we also need support. Um, and I think it's, you know, sometimes thinking that mothers can do it all, can take it all, um, sells mothers really short because the reality is that there, that there are structural challenges that mothers experience from the moment of conception um, that, that mothers have to exist in. And, and we're really the kind thing to do to support mothers is not to 
expect them to be able to manage everything, but to create enabling environments for them to thrive. So yes, you mentioned what, what are advocacy strategies. Um, so looking at the early motherhood experience, um, we focus on uh, starting really with the pregnancy journey. Um, you know, pregnancy is this incredible, miraculous event. Um, however, it's not, it's not that for every woman. Um, depending on how we make actions, everyone should be thrilled to find out they're pregnant. When we know we have a country with such a high gender-based violence um, rate that not everyone chooses to fall pregnant. And then we have, uh, we make we make really unfair judgments on a woman's ability to, to navigate that for herself, um, thinking that it's always in the person's control when it is often not. Even within the concept of a couple or ma marriage, you know, women aren't always able to, they don't always have agency over their own bodies and making decisions like birth control or um, so it's not as simple as you chose to fall pregnant mm. so we've got issues around you know um you know the kind of uh gender-based violence and the sort of um expectations around women and their bodies in pregnancy and then the other thing is that one thinks because a, pre a pregnancy is sort of housed within a body that it is therefore it has no cost and that could not be further from the truth pregnancy is incredibly expensive and the irony is is that the 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 less resource, financial resource you have, um, the more it often actually costs you. For example, if you require state sort of health services for your pregnancy and you need to go and attend antenatal appointments, um, if you're doing that within the public health sector, going to for your for your checkup is often a whole day event, which means that you need to take an entire day off of work. You need to find other childcare arrangements for your other children. You know, these are it, it, that's expensive. So in South Africa, we have a child support grant which supports children um, from when they are registered, which normally happens in the first year of their life. But we, we don't have anything to support a, a mother during the pregnancy stage when we know that pregnancy is one of the most critical stages of development for the child. So it's both a mother and a pro child strategy to really say that knowledge that pregnancy is actually it's not just a responsibility of a woman. And I think, I think that's why Embrace exists because we have some really specific um, thoughts and judgments that we place on women and we place on mothers and expectations on them that are actually really unfair. And so as a society, if we say that social support is really important for us, then we need to look at what kind of social support we provide. Is it really holistic enough to, to adequately support someone um, and from the beginning of their, their life journey? Um, and so we're, we're positioning for a maternity support grant or support, income support during pregnancy. Um, then we look at the kind of the healthcare, navigating the healthcare system is really, it's often not very mom friendly. Um, and one of the things that we're really passionate about is eradicating obstetric violence um, in South Africa. And obstetric violence is um, a violent that can have it has it can be physical violence it can be emotional violence or verbal abuse it can be sexual violence which also happens um that happens within a healthcare system to a person who is pregnant or laboring or, or postpartum um and what we are we've been doing a lot of work on this We've commissioned desktop research. We are now working on we're, we're working on a um, ongoing advocacy efforts to really look at what it takes to eradicate this. And I think one of the first things we've realised is that people don't actually understand what obstetric violence is or how common it is. And so this is the work we're doing now. We're actually embarking on a really um, what will be a really powerful sort of mini documentary series where we're going to be speaking to women who have survived this. And what we hope to be able to really show is that this is not something that just happens in a sensational news story, but women have come to expect a really low level care when it comes to um, perinatal care. And, and as a result, they, they, we, we minimize for ourselves the kinds of the level of, of care and respect that we that we should that we are entitled to that's written into the patient rights charter um so so women deserve dignified access to healthcare services and we want to really push that and we also want to make sure that those who are perpetuating these sort of very patriarchal or paternalistic sort of healthcare systems that allow for women to, to really struggle and to suffer and to be traumatized are held to account. And that ultimately we shift this within the healthcare system. 
So that is work in pregnancy. Um, and then, yeah, we go on to looking at breastfeeding um, and sort of the support for the, for the transitional state once your baby is born. Um, there is a real expectation in our country that um, mothers should breastfeed their children and absolutely believe in the benefit of breastfeeding for mm. the mother and child. But we also believe that there is a bit of a, a skewed um, push for, for seeing how, how breastfeeding is, is a relationship and it's not, it's not just about child nutrition. It really, it, it, it can't be about that because ultimately it's done at the expense of a mother's body. And so we need to look at how it affects her and what kind of support we put in place to make the so-called very natural thing happen, um, which isn't just physical help, although that's really needed. So lactation support is really low. We don't have good um, quality, consistent, easily accessible and culturally competent lactation services in the country. But then we also don't create enabling environments. Women have to go back to work really early. They're having, if they're working in the informal economy, they may get no access to UIF. They may not even be registered. So they may have to make decisions. Do I work and put it on the table to my family or do I set mm. so I can breastfeed the baby? So those are just the issues I've got, and we've got many more. Um, but I, you know, that, that really look at the sort of start of setting mothers up for success. Um, and we're saying that. It needs to be a part of a strategy for a whole society um, doing well, which sees not just the child, although the child is really important. We say that the people who want their children to thrive the most are the mothers, are the caregivers. So we take that as a given, and we're so pro all of the interventions that help young children thrive. But we're saying at the same time, please don't forget mothers, because Yes, there are a million babies being born every year in this country, but there are also a million women stepping into a new journey of motherhood and they need investment and care. Um, and so those are the things that we are advocating for. Thanks, Julie. Oh my word. I mean, that sounds amazing. And you said so many things that resonated, you know, <laughs> when we're talking about the body and the healthcare, I did recently, you know, Serena Williams has placed this issue <laughs> sort of, you know, when she went to go and give birth and uh, just about, how her issues with her own body were dismissed, you know, during that period Absolutely. and her health issues. And so I was so, uh, I was amazed by that. And, you know, one has to think, oh my God, if that's Serena Williams, you know, what chance do the rest of us have of being listened to? And how does one assert oneself sort of within that power dynamic of doctor and patient, um, especially given, you know, South Africa and our uh, unequal power structures. And then I also loved what you said about sort of, you know, when you have the baby and that is often a no win situation for women because there is this, ex, you know, there's the bubble of the perfect married family that you can have your baby in. I've heard harder stories of women who have had their babies too early and sort of you know, early, even in the <laughs> early 20s and sort of ostracized by the family, really traumatic, really painful. And then also, you know, later in life, and choosing not to have a baby, or have a baby later, you know, then it's like when, as if there's an expectation. So I think it's great that like narrative around that is coming out and we're starting to talk about agency. I mean, just, just your whole description of all of this is making me think, you know, it's as if pregnancy and childbirth happens in a bubble that is separate from society. Um, and that actually it, it, it's integrated in everything. It affects work, it affects, um, you know, everything. And so when you ended off and you said, don't forget about the mothers, the health and the happiness of the child is really very much dependent on the health and the happiness, happiness of the caregiver. I absolutely, mean, absolutely. And it's completely undervalued. And we know that because if you're trying, if you uh, either for yourself or for someone you know are trying to advocate for mental health services, uh, for someone who's struggling with postnatal depression and someone who does not have access to private resources, is not able to maybe pay for a private therapist and therefore needs to navigate through the public health care system, it's a really hard mm. endeavor. It is not easy to access psychosocial support if you don't have the resources to do it privately. And that, that tells us a lot about how we value mothers and how we value women in society. Because if we understood that you know, a, a mother whose mental health is really cared for, whose body is cared for, if we understood that that is not, it's not just about her, 
You're right. Exactly what you said is absolutely right. She affects the whole home. She affects her whole community. Her, her baby's thriving is dependent on her physical and mental well-being. Her other children, her partner, her family, it's all affected. But we, we like to compartmentalize things in South Africa. Um, and to be honest, this is not actually the South African problem. This is international. You, you know, you referenced Serena Williams, and I think that speaks a lot to the dynamics of, of race and, um, and and intersectionality between race and womanhood and birth and motherhood. And um, we see it in the States, it's, it's been widely reported, but we see it here too. Um, but, you know, ultimately we just, we really do not provide adequate um, recognition. And I think, it, it, I think that's why I say it speaks to the, how we value women, how we value mothers within our society. We, we don't, I think we just think that, you know, mothers need to get over it and get on with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of dismissive um, behavior and, and, and attitudes and therefore services that are provided sells everyone short. Um, and and so, so, yeah, it's not about, you know, um, saying prioritize mothers over other group, saying it's all, we are all so interlinked. But if you really care about young children, then surely you care about the mothers too. No, exactly. And I mean, you know, what came out, you know, and I, we can't have this conversation without pivoting towards a little bit towards COVID and the lockdown, mm. because one of the, you know, one of the, I often say one of the positive, I mean, it wasn't, uh, experience obviously wasn't positive, but one of the positive things that came out is the narrative around mental health increased and the narrative around uh, the, bu uh, the burdens that mothers experience, or, you know, it's often framed as a triple burden because it's economic, it's work, and it's child care, and with the children at home, and then also community care within families. Women generally are also caregivers to extended family, and so, um, and within their community. And so, uh, we, don't, we don't have a lot of time left for the segment, but in just a couple of minutes, if you can tell us just about a few of the challenges that came out during lockdown, because I'm sure some of that came up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you've spoken to it already, but the absolute burden of childcare primarily fell at, on, on women. And so, you know, looking at um, what was reported in the NIST crime reports, where one, two, three, even four and where five reports, um, you know, indicated that um, women were disproportionately affected by um, having to step out of both the formal and informal economy in order to take care of their homes, um, which puts them at more, they, makes them far more financially vulnerable um, and economically vulnerable, uh, which is definitely a problem in cases where there is violence not having your own access to financial resources. And in fact, effectively, you know, homes kind of closed down. We became far more private. Um, and so I think for women who were in unsafe home environments, uh, the, the lockdown must have been absolutely terrifying for them. And we've seen narrative reports coming out of women's experiences of stuck in a home with, with you know, victim abusers. Um, then just the burden of childcare. I mean, I, I, one would hope that we would understand how critical um, childcare is, seeing that, you know, and, and sort of maybe seeing at home for the first time, and I'm hoping these realizations did happen at home, what it actually took to care for and homeschool and, you know, we kind of keep a home going in a, in a pandemic situation. Um, you know, again, speaking to the issues of early motherhood uh, for, for women who had to give birth during 2020 and into 2021, and even now on some um, healthcare facilities, uh, you know, you had to basically drop it off at the door and you're having no access to support. No, your partners weren't allowed in. And that's incredibly... Um, uh, incredibly traumatizing in the in the first sort of wave of the pandemic you know there was a real risk around covid no matter about the sort of a covid positive mother whether she'd be isolated from her baby or not and um, so we were doing a lot of work with a coalition um looking at called messages for mothers looking at kind of how to kind of give mothers a sense of their rights and and also just understanding you know, the evolving nature of the pandemic and how that would impact them um, in their early motherhood journeys. But but that was incredibly hectic for, for, for everyone. But definitely, if you're giving birth and then had to be on your own, you know, if you had a cesarean section, you're three days on your own with no family support, no access. Um, you know, we know that that has had 
real impact um, on women. And, and, and as a result, healthcare systems also, you know, struggling, feeling really overburdened. We also, um, some, some, some healthcare services have not been friendly around partner support anywhere in hospitals and, and make their own sort of rules up around whether a person has access to, may have access to a birth companion or not. But during lockdown, this was, you know, definitely sort of shut down altogether, which has actually been really, really distressing. Uh, mothers with premature babies also, you know, not being able to stay in the hospital overnight and struggling with that kind of separation. So there are lots and lots and lots of ongoing effects. I don't think we're going to fully know um, what the last two years have done to mothers until, yeah. you know, five, ten years' time. But I have no doubt that the impact has been hectic. Thanks, Julie. We need to take a short break, but we are going to come back and continue the conversation after this. Mm -hmm. 